In this video, we'll take a deep dive into world medalist Yoena Zimami's throw-by technique, examining the mechanics he uses to consistently score takedowns against some of the best wrestlers in the world. As we've seen in the overview part of this series, Imami has several primary options once he obtains his underhook, with the throw-by undoubtedly being one of his best attacks. Think of the throw-by as a technique to off-balance the opponent and make them susceptible to an immediate follow-up attack. The throw-by then is not really a takedown itself, but is rather a setup that is chained with another technique, such as a go-behind, a near-side single leg, a far side leg scoop, or a body lock. To execute a throw by, you'll need an underhook, which Imami obtains with his left arm. The grip Imami prefers with his underhooking hand is on the opponent's lat. This lat grip ensures Imami can keep his underhooking elbow in a strong position and prevent the opponent from biting down and torquing his elbow inward. Imami's stance just before executing his throw by is generally square, meaning feet in an even line. Although it is worth mentioning that Imami will sometimes have his inside leg, meaning his right leg, slightly more forward than his outside leg. As far as head position, Imami's head is generally on the opposite side of the underhook. But he can also do it when his head is on the same side as the underhook, provided that he eventually can move his head towards the opposite side when he performs the throw by movement. He can also do it when he has the opponent's head trapped underneath in a front headlock position. Now let's get into the mechanics. Imami uses the same motion to generate power for all of his throw bys. We'll break this motion down into four components or steps. Plant, contort, follow through, and finish. Let's take these one by one. The first component, plant, is accomplished by planting the inside foot, the right foot for Imami, at a perpendicular angle relative to the opponent. Planting the foot in this fashion gives Imami better positioning to perform his contortion and generate power. Watch again how Imami plants his inside foot, changing its angle from head on to perpendicular. One detail worth noting is that depending on its distance from the opponent, Imami will sometimes take a small step forward just before he plants his inside foot. Here, as the opponent is backing away, Imami takes an even bigger step forward before planting his inside foot. Another detail for the plant component is that Amami will keep a bend in his knee with the planting leg, which optimizes his ability to drive off this leg. The next component, contort, involves a drastic twisting or pivoting of the head and torso so that they're facing the same direction as the planting foot, which is opposite the underhook side. Depending on the situation, Amami and other athletes proficient with the throw by will sometimes contort their heads as low as their inside knee. What is the purpose of the contortion? In short, it allows for the generation of a tremendous amount of power from the entire body that is ultimately channeled through the underhook. By drastically pivoting the head, torso, and hips away from the underhook side, the underhooking arm, and by extension the opponent's arm being underhooked, are also pulled forcefully in that direction. So we've talked about the plant and contort components. Now let's move on to the third component, follow through. As Imami plants and contorts to generate power for the throw by, he follows through by swinging his outside leg forward to help pivot his hips and close the distance between his hips and his opponent's hips. With his hips close, Imami is better able to transition to his finishes. Now that the opponent has been sufficiently off-balanced due to the plant, contort, and follow-through, 
it's time to move on to the finish. For this final component, let's put everything together. Plant with the inside foot. Contort the head and torso. Follow through with the outside leg. If the off-balancing effect causes the opponent to post both hands to the mat, a simple go-behind becomes the preferred finish. Underhook. Plant. Contort. In this situation, with the opponent fleeing, Amami follows through by jumping forward onto the knee of his outside leg. For the finish, Amami initially grabs a near side single leg, but then sees an opportunity to transition to a go behind. Plant, contort, follow through. And notice during the follow through that Amami is already reaching for the opponent's legs to transition to his finish. Once in this underhook versus overhook dogfight position, Imami likes to shelve the foot of the opponent's near side leg in his right hip pocket. One of the great values of the shelving method is that it maintains control and elevation of the opponent's leg without needing to use a hand. With his right arm free, Imami can maintain height and balance and eventually finish the takedown. Here, Imami is able to finish by limp arming his left underhooking arm out of the position. A third finishing option Imami uses off the throw by is a far side leg scoop. Here, Imami uses his free hand to hook underneath the opponent's far thigh, and the opponent quickly concedes the takedown. In this clip, Imami initially attacks the near side single leg, but has trouble finishing due to the opponent's strong overhook and is putting weight on the near side leg. Imami then transitions to the far side leg scoop and uses the control to elevate the opponent's far leg, which forces him to post both hands to the mat. From here, Imami transitions to a go behind. This clip is a great example of chain wrestling. Imami starts with one finishing option, the near side single, transitions to a second, the far side leg scoop, and eventually transitions to a go behind once he forces the opponent's hands to the mat. The final finishing option we'll look at off the throw by is the transition to the body lock position. Snap down. Underhook. Plant. Contort. Follow through. And far side leg scoop. Near side single leg. Body lock. Once in the body lock, Imami has at least two finishes he likes. The first is to run his hips behind his opponent's hips while sliding his lock down towards the waist. This finish puts a great deal of stress on the opponent's overhooking shoulder and often forces them to concede the go behind. Here's another example of the motion from the same match. Another finish Imami uses from the body lock position is a lift and throw. Because the throw by often flares the opponent's elbow open, it gives Imami the opportunity to get a shoulder deep underhook, which makes cinching the body lock much easier. Here Imami takes a big step forward with his outside leg, then his inside leg, while simultaneously popping his hips into full extension. From here, he arches backwards and drops the opponent onto his left hip for the big throw. That concludes the Yoenna Zamami throw by study. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below.